Uh, hi, Mikhail. Just um, following up on Simon's question about Oba, obviously he's been through, as we've said, so much this year personally as well as the team. We, we know he's a very big character and big personality, but has he? have you had to work to keep his spirits up and his personality around the, the dressing room this season? What's he been like as a person? No, it's, uh, you know, Ova's character is, is someone really lively, is always joking, always smiling, and, and he had a difficult season for, for many reasons. We just, um, as a club and, and the staff, tried to support him as much as possible, the way that the team did as well when he had uh, some personal issues, they were right behind him. And, um, and again, as I said before, football brings you another opportunity. He's in a good place right now, and, um, and he's very hungry to do something. So he's the same. He's the same over as ever. He's not been affected by it all. Well, everything affects, you know. But you have to come through that. It's about um, how you react to difficulties in your career, which you're gonna have at some stage. And he had some this season, and um, it's about showing the reaction and and the capacity to, to have that. Thank you. Thanks, Sam. Go to Matt Dunn. Hi, Mikael. Um, I just wondered, you've been associated with the club for a long time. What do you believe the Arsenal DNA to be? And are those qualities long gone, as has been suggested this week by um, one of the club's former players? Sorry, Matt, can you repeat Sorry, Matt, can you repeat I just wonder, well, when you hear the words Arsenal's DNA, yeah. what, what's yeah. your impression of what that is? Uh, and has the club still got the same DNA as it had years ago? Well, our DNA is well, our DNA through many to factors, many factors. The history that yeah. we have, how we represent the club, our values, our way of playing, our way of doing things, our togetherness between what is the team, what is the fan, and uh, what we are able to transmit to the world with that. Um, and I believe that uh, what we are trying to do is very much linked to that. Um, there is still things to do, yes. But there was always this, because this game is evolving, this club is evolving, this club is not the same as 20 years ago, and it's not going to be the same in 20 years' time. So it's all the time something that um, you have to embrace, but at the same time evolve. Um, Thierry Henry said this week that those qualities that you talked about, and I think we're all talking about the same qualities, were long gone. You're on the inside, is that true? I said that there are some that, uh, things that um, things we have to recover and uh, it's in our hands to do that. But I think that uh, that is a responsibility for a lot of people, not just the team, not just the board, not just the ownership. It's as well the fans and everybody that loves, really loves this football club. Thanks, man. We'll go to the last couple now. Firstly, John Cross. Hello, Mikel. I was just going to ask you, you um, the, the club itself has been in European competition every season since 95-96. You, yourself included, pulled off something of a miracle last year by winning the FA Cup and getting the, getting the team into Europe. How important in terms of prestige, in terms of taking the club forward and indeed in terms of finance is, is getting back into Europe? Uh, for you and the club next season? Well, I think it gives you the platform um, visually first, as you mentioned, and then because it's uh, related to our history and the demands that this club has got, and then because obviously financially, the way to attract a sponsor, to attract players, to improve your squad, and to challenge for the big trophies, you have to be in Europe. And, um, and that's the big challenge that we have ahead of us. But both as a player and, and as a manager at, at Arsenal, you, you've been involved in some pretty tense games, return legs, you know, final days. The, the clubs seem to be able to always pull out the, these results. How much confidence now have you got that they can do that again? Well, tomorrow we've night? got experience uh, from the past. We've got experience from this season as well in many ways. And the last one has been in Villarreal when um, we were in a really difficult position with two nil down and ten men, but we still managed... Um, to pull something out and um, and we have a big shot tomorrow. Thanks so much. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks, John. And finally, we'll go to Nick Ames. Hi, Mikel. Hi. Um, we um, we know that as um, as you said earlier, some of the players may um, maybe will will leave the club at the end of the season, or there may be changes in personnel. Are those decisions made already, or are there some players who maybe tomorrow night and and in the next few games can change your mind and change that decision? Yeah, a lot of things can change for many different reasons, Nick. Uh, something is the 
a plan and then a plan that someone that you think is going to stay for any reason um, that happens and, and it changes. So it's very difficult to predict 100% of that plan that is going to be what, uh, what you expect to be. Um, and um, just um, looking back at last week's game, obviously some things went well, some things didn't go well. Um, what would you do differently going into tomorrow's game? Well, the way we started the game, that's for sure. We did some things that uh, we didn't talk about. Um, we conceded an early goal, which I think um, it was difficult um, to swallow. I and mean, it took us um, a little while to react after we had a really good period. How we handled both boxes and the discipline to play with 11 players in this competition, it's key. And we didn't manage either to do that. But when we did a lot of the things that um, we have to do, um, the game looked completely different. Thank you. Thanks, Nick. Thanks, everyone. See Thank you. Soon. you.